Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be using mica powder and making some different things we've never tried before. I hope you'll stay tuned. So the nice people at the Hippie Crafter, Hippie Crafter, I'm not the, it's Hippie Crafter, sent me their mica powders and they're really great colors. I want to show you those colors first. This It's a set of 24. Hopefully the box is in frame. Maybe I'll do it this way. I turned them upside down so that you'd be able to see them. And then, oops, I have an orange one. Clearly I'm just playing checkers with them. And then I have another blue. But they're really vibrant colors, and my other mica powders were very pale in comparison, so I love these. I'm very excited to play with them. So the first thing we're going to do with them is we're going to make watercolor paints out of them. I think I talked about this before, but I'm not sure if I actually made them. And here's the first five that I made. I'll show you how I did this. This is a plastic packaging from, I don't know what, I think it was a big stamp and die set maybe. And I like the packaging because it has give, I can push in on it and I can get better um, contact with my palette knife. So I'll show you how I did it, how I made the watercolor. I took a lot of this, probably that much. And then cap it immediately because you know me it'll be all over me and everything I work with for the next month if I don't and that again is brilliant blue I don't know if I said that before I'm gonna put this is gum Arabic I got it from dickblick.com looks like this it's um, 210 no 2110 liters I don't know if that's right or not. That sounds wrong. I think that's less than a liter, but anyway, we'll go with it. And then I put several drops in there. And uh, What I did this, I figured if I didn't have enough gum Arabic to make this all soluble, I would um, add more to it. And if I had too much, then I would just add more of the mica powder. So either way, it doesn't really bother me. I'm going to move this up a little bit so I'm hopefully completely in the frame. When you make this, you don't want it to be, okay, I don't know if you can see how thick this is. This is not the consistency you want it to be. Can you see how dry that is? You want it to be much wetter than that. And I'll get you to the consistency you want. You need to make sure that the gum arabic and the mica powder have um, made, made a nice cream, we'll call it like that. And if it's not super creamy, or if there's a little bit that's kind of pasty on the back of your knife, you want to keep combining it. You don't want to skip on this step because this is where you're making it, um, making the two of them combine to be one. And if it's too dry, this is when you need to figure that out. Obviously it can dry out. I mean, uh, your watercolors, you want them to dry out, but you don't want them to be dry at this stage because if they are, then you're going to have no, um, you're not going to have the ability to paint with them because they're going to be too dry. See what I'm talking about? That springiness of this pad I'm using, it really works well. Of course you could use probably a foam plate upside down. That might work until it cracked. If you don't put a lot of pressure on it, it might not crack. Okay, it's pretty drippy now. Can you see the consistency on my palette knife? You'll be able to see it when I put it in here. See how runny it is? You want it to be runny at this stage. Okay, I have more on this knife and I'm gonna get those that off with just a little dollop. I don't know if you can see how little bit of gum arabic I put on there. But I wanna scrape it all off And I'm sure there's more on the bottom of this palette knife too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash my hands and then we'll be back in just a second and we'll start playing with this a little bit. So I want to show you what my cards look like once I've painted them. I just put down rows of washi tape 
on either side of my lines and then I just painted them. And I think I'll need two coats of the red because it's not as bold as I want it to be, but I think the green and the yellow look really nice together. This was orange and red. The red, as I said, isn't as vibrant as I want it to be. But anyway, I want to show you the other thing I want to do with this. I want to use the gold, or the yellow, I'm sorry. I They've dried now, and I put them into a palette. And so what I'm going to do with the gold, I've wet these. I just took a little spray bottle. I'm just going to, I think I want to do the orange. No, maybe I'll do the red and the yellow. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint another uh, piece of cardstock because this is where I'm going to die cut my uh, my image or yeah my sentiment from hello hello that's my sentiment and I'm just going to give it a couple coats because I want it to be really sparkly and I think it does does a nice job well I don't have all my lights on sorry about that. I think it does a nice job of um, really making the shine show up. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it really is sparkly, I think. And for something you just made with mica powder and uh, a little bit of gum arabic, I think it's pretty cool. So then I'm going to get my green on my brush. Did I say that? Or what did I say? Red. Never mind. I'm not going to get the green on my brush because clearly that's not what I wanted. Okay back to the red and they all re-wet really well in case you wondered about that the red I don't think is as glittery as the other colors for whatever reason I'm not sure if red is more difficult to um, make sparkly but it doesn't seem to be as sparkly as the rest but it's still beautiful don't get me wrong about that it's a pretty pretty color okay so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to let those dry and then we're going to cut them out with my die cutting machine, my Vagabond, got to say I love that, and then I'm going to put together these two and make them into nice little cards. So let me do that and I'll be right back. So I made one of the cards up using the background. I made this hello. This is a die that I got from In Love Arts and I just painted it with my watercolor paints I just made. Look how sparkly and pretty this is. I might add a couple little uh, diamonds around somewhere, but you know, once I get started, I never can stop. So then I'm going to make another card really quickly with um, the red glitter paint that I'm going to do what I, I did a couple things. The first thing I did is I had this embellishment and it didn't have a lot of sparkle to it. So I painted it. I don't know if you can see this. I painted it with the red. It was already kind of pinkish to begin with. So I just added the red sparkly paint over it. And then I'm, I just put glue on the center of the butterfly. So I'm going to lay it in the center of my card and then I'll just, it will, the, the wings will just be free flying. And then I have this hello die cut and I thought I would put it in the bottom right corner. I put glue behind it, wet glue. So hopefully you can see that. I got a little bit too much wet glue right there, so I'm just going to kind of slide that H into it a little bit. And that is a simple but elegant little card, I think. And if I wanted to, I thought I would do this with you. If I wanted to, I could wet my yellow and then just go over the Again, this is just a paper embellishment that I got that was, I think it was maybe from Michael's and I've had it a little while, but I thought it'd be fun to show you how you can change it from not, not too exciting to kind of frisky by just putting a little of my, our new watercolor paints on it. You don't have to be a watercolorist to be able to do this and clearly I'm not, as we all know. I'm going to slide my butterfly over just a little bit so his wings are more centered. Luckily, I can do that because I didn't um, glue the whole thing down. I just glued the center of him, so he's better, a little bit better. Anyway, so I'll show you that once the yellow is dried, but I think it looks a lot, lot more fun. Oh, I can add a little blue. Hold on. Now that I'm going crazy, I'll just add a little bit of the blue around the bases. Hopefully, it doesn't come off the card because I put a little bit too much water into it. 
but I'm hoping, hoping it won't be too bad. Okay, so let me let that dry, and then once I've got it dry, I'll come back and I'll show you that once he's nice and frisky. Then I'm going to show you how to make um, your own gift wrap. I thought this would be fun to do. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make my own gift wrap. And I thought it would be fun to show you how to do this with um, this paper. It's used for when you paint. It's like a... Um, it's kind of like huge masking tape, only it's not masking tape, it's just paper. And you get it for like $3 a roll, and it's um, 9 inches, I think it's 9 inches tall. Hold on, let me tell you how tall it is. It might be 12 inches tall, but I don't think it is. I think it's 9. Yep, it's 9 inches tall. And then you can make this whatever length you want. I'm going to make it the length of this um, Stampin' Up! grid paper, because I thought that would be the easiest way to do it. So we're just going to cut it out. This is very, very uh, thin paper. And I thought it would be fun to show you it on a thinner paper so you could see that it was kind of the equivalent of, of a wrapping paper weight. Okay, I've got a little piece over here I need to snip off. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to get your paper and you're going to put it on something that's scrap-ish. And then I'm going to take, this is my palette that I used before, and you're going to use like a Mod Podge. This is Collage Podge, and I like it better than Mod Podge because I can get the bottle open and I can squirt it out. Where sometimes with Mod Podge, you know, I just can't get the bottle open after I've used it. So I'm just going to squirt three little piles of it because I'm going to do three different colors. And if I need to add more, we'll add more. But I'm going to use, this is pastel purple. I'm going to use about that much. Then I'm going to put that there so I remember what's what. Then this color is pearl uh, lilac. Sorry, I want to make sure I had the right name. And then that one over there. This one is phthalo blue. It's more of a purple though to me. It's probably a blue but it looks more purple. Ooh, way too much. We're going to roll with it though. Okay, so put that one there. Then I'm going to get a palette knife because I think that's the easiest way to spread it. And I have two palette knives I'm going to be playing with because I want to be able to use them in the colors, you know, in the colors that are lightest. I'm going to do lightest to darkest so that I don't ruin my, um, don't mess up my next color. Jeez, I can't, I can't chew it, gum and walk at the same time, or in this case, talk and, and um, swirl paint around. It's not even paint, but look how pretty it is. And as I said, I'm not doing a huge piece, so I don't think um, I don't think I'm going to run out. But if I do, I can always squirt more in. I'm going to have to add more of my Claud Podge. This is going to make DIY acrylic paint, but it's not just going to be acrylic paint. It's going to be iridescent, or it should be sparkly uh, paint. So we're having we're making a big mess because that's what I'm good at. I'm never good at keeping a palette into a little spot. I always end up with a really big spot of it. Okay, I'm going to get my brush and then we'll paint. And I'm going to use, I think it's like a one inch brush. And this is just a, a craft brush. It's not any kind of um, serious brush. Okay, I'll clean my palette knife in a second. So all I want to do is I want to come up with a pattern. And in my case, because I'm not really good at thinking up patterns, I think I'm going to do like a zigzag. That could be too much for me, but we're going to go with it anyway. And if you got any of your mica powder on your paper, you just wipe it off at this point because it doesn't have anything, you know, in it. 
no no um, medium like the like the um, geez collage posh once it has collage posh you're not going to be able to pull it off easily <sighs> all right I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little oops now this would be a great project to do with your kids once you mix up the mica powder because I think if you're if you're doing the mica powder with your kids you're going to end up making a big mess with the mica because it's so fine and it goes everywhere. So you want to make sure that you do that part, I think, yourself. But this part, you definitely could do with your kids. And it'd be fun. All right, let me do one more stripe of this and then we're going to go on to one of the other colors. Make a stripe of those in between. And Obviously, I'm not a painter. I'm trying to do this fast so that you can see what you can do with mica powders. And I think what I'm going to do now is I think I'll have Rich fast forward so that you can get a, an idea of how to do something like this quickly and come up with a plan. So I'm going to get back to the paper, the gift wrap, and show you that once it's dry. So I wanted to go on to my next project, and that is using your laminator to make bookmarks. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that with my mica powder. I cut out a bunch of leaves. That leaf is really embedded in there. Um, I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper because there's no point in um, there's no point in doing this if you don't have a piece of scrap paper because I'm going to make a big mess as I'm sure you already are aware. I'm going to take all of my leaves and I have the three leaves that I did that for, from In Love Arts. I'm not sure where these other dies came from of the ones on the right, but I know the three on the left are from In, in Love Arts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my embossing powder. Nope, not embossing powder. Embossing ink, because, you know, I like to say the wrong thing every chance I get. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to basically pounce it over the leaves or, you know, stick the leaves into it so that the leaves get sticky. You want your leaves to have some kind of sticky ink on it, and this is the best way to do it. If you don't have this kind of ink, you can use glycerin, you know, vegetable glycerin that you use for making candy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to spread these out and I'm going to take a couple of different green or maybe I want to do these for fall. I haven't decided. I think right now I'll just stick to like a green and an orange. I have a brown. We'll just shoot for a few colors of mica. And you're going to use a brush and it's easier if you go to the lid for your mica because then you won't get a huge amount and then you're just going to brush over the leaf with it hopefully I'm in the Let's see if I can push this back a little bit so you can see it better clearly should have gone to the lid for that because it's so bright I'm gonna get the orange This time I am going to use the lid because, you know, I don't want to go too crazy with this. I'm just going to tap some of this orange in to make it look more fall-like. Even though it's spring, I'm going for a fall look in my flower or my leaves. These are the things I do, you know. Okay, let's put the green on this one. And if you can see, the um, embossing ink really holds on to the material, the both the leaf and the mica powder. Let me 
do the rest of these and I'll be right back. Well, I'm not sure if you can see where the laminating pouch is. It's right here. And here are my leaves. For the most part, they're green on the on leaning onto the brown side with tints of orange and yellow. And what I want to do is I'm going to lay them in face down. You can lay them face up or face down, but I figured that if I uh, explain it to you like this, that I'm going to lay them face down. And I'm going to two them on and uh, on angles so that they're not all matchy matchy. I don't want them to look like they're all just standing in a row. I did kind of put some some of the um, mica powder on the back. I just rubbed it in a little. So if somebody was looking at the back, they wouldn't notice a big difference between the front and the back. I mean, the, there is a difference, but it's not as going to be as um, crazy different as um, it could have been. I'm not going to put any paper in here because I think these will be cool all on their own. Just my thought. And I want to make it into a bookmark. So it's going to be kind of fun that it's going to just be um, clear. At least that's what I'm thinking. And you want to lay this down gently. If you don't like your placement, lift it back up and put them in again. And then you're going to run this through your laminator. My laminator has a 12 inch slot, so I can put them in either way. You know, I don't, don't have to put them in top up. And I often run mine through twice because I really like to make sure that the images get really pressed in there. So we'll wait and see how our first run goes. Isn't that fun? I think it is. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. This time I'm doing it from top to bottom so that my top is really squeezed in. You can just sprinkle some of the mica powder into your pouch. I did that with this pink and I at the top I kind of I let it blur too much. I if you well I'll do one so that you can see it because it's um, it's fun and if you didn't do a ton of it you could use that in a in a window card and um, you know had it so that it looks like it's just like a mist of smoke maybe so there are our leaves I think it's pretty fun I don't know what you think you could always uh, put like let's say that you put another piece of paper behind it so it looked like this you can do that if you wanted to I thought it'd be fun to just have a clear one a bookmark that's clear it's just my own thinking so let me show you how I did the the uh, in the laminating pouch with nothing but the mica powder. It's important when you do this that your your laminating pouch is flat because this very the the top right here if it's not flat and you go to close it it's going to do like a puff of mica powder so you want to be careful with that just throwing that out to you and I think this time I'm going to go with some black and this is I think silver gray and a white. I thought it'd be fun to make it look almost like a smoky background. Just saying. So the first thing you want to do, you're going to get your, I'm going to use my white first and you need to use a paintbrush that you can basically flick it on with. I'll do this with just the brush without anything on it so you can see. If you go like this, you're going to end up with uh, fine spray of powder but if you go like this like that you're going to end up with dots and that's what I'm shooting for is dots so I have silver gray that I'm going to play with first and again I think I told you that I want to make this kind of look like smoke I might make a card that looks like it's you know it doesn't matter if you get a lot in one spot I don't know if you can see that I'm trying to use my brush so it's flicking straight down okay then I'm going to use graphite next I really like their colors the set that I bought myself on Amazon is all pastels and I'm not a pastel girl I don't know if you know that but I'm all about the bright colors and so um, when I when I got this set I was thrilled 
Okay, now remember that you've got some of this gray on here, so you got to get that off if you're going to go into your white, because you don't want to end up with that gray in your white or you'll um, contaminate it. You don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to flick some of this down. We're shooting for, you know, like dots, not, not a uh, misty kind of look. You can do the whole background, you, know, you can do the whole page if you wanted to. I'm just going to do kind of this middle section. And I'm going to do near the top, oops, see, see that? That's where the brush touches it. If you want that kind of look, okay, I'll show you how to get that. If you want that kind of look, all you have to do is basically brush it on like that. And it brushes onto your laminating pouch really, really nice. I'll make a couple stripes with it so you can see that once it's laminated. And then we're going on to our graphite, which is our darkest blackish color. Oh, I just got a big gob of it on my laminating pouch. That's not what I wanted. These are the things I have to show you how to fix, right? In case it happens to you. I shouldn't have put my bottle right on my laminating pouch. That wasn't smart. But anyway, let me show you how to fix it. I've got one of my handy bibs that I keep on the side of my chair. And I have this bottle of spray that is about a teaspoon and a half of baby shampoo in water. And I'm going to spray my mitt, yeah, my bib, mitt, bib. I'm just going to make it up now. And I'm just going to wipe that back off, hopefully. Some of these colors do stain a little bit. So if you're wondering why you've got a color that you can't get off, some of them do stain. All right, we're going to give this a run through and see how it comes out. I'm going from top to bottom on my laminating pouch. We'll see how it works. Don't forget the middle section is where we have the spots that I want to look like smoke. Okay, let me put it through one more time so I have a more flat look. See at the top here where it's this black line is, that's what I was trying to get rid of, was that gob of powder that I just kind of accidentally put there. I do think it's going to look like smoke. Let me turn that off because I don't think we need it anymore. Okay, here are, I'm going to put a piece of paper behind it so you can see it better. Here are the stripes that we made and the white stripe is in the middle. It's it's frisky, but see this at the top is what I was trying to avoid and I didn't do a good job of it. Let me get my paper trimmer and I'll trim this out the way I think it should be trimmed. Again, we're not gonna use the stripe section. That was just so you could see what, um, what you could do if you wanted to. Now, if you wanna do a card, let's say you decide to do a card and you want it to have a smoky look that's, this side has got too much on it. I'm going to get rid of some of this. Okay, I think it looks pretty cool. Hold on for a second. Let me cut out one of these other ones so I can show you what the leaves look like as a bookmark. I have some tassels that I got. I think I got them on eBay, and it was like... 50 tassels for a few dollars and I'll put that link if you if you're interested in in doing bookmarks but I do think that these are really a lot of fun okay so here's our smoke and I'll try and find a fun card idea to do with this smoke I think it's fun it looks like smoke I don't think I should have put the white in if I really want it to look like smoke. And you can still see through it. So if you're wondering about like, well, if I did that, then I wouldn't be able to see through it. Yeah, you can still see through it. And then here's my pink one. And then I love the leaves. I'm really, really happy with these. And all I have to do is, is punch a little hole at the top if I want to, or I can just use it like this as a bookmark. I think it's really, really fun. Wait, let me put something behind it so you can see. You can really see it. There you go. Isn't that neat? I'll turn it sideways so you can really see it. There you go. Hopefully it's in the camera better. And then here's my smoke. Isn't that fun? I think it is. Anyway, look how the it has like smoky ripples up in here. Anyway, 
So then let me show you the finished paper gift wrap. It's still not completely dry, but that's what happens when you do something, you know, two, two or three projects as close together. But it looks, I'll tilt it. The purple is dry because I waited for the purple to dry before I painted the blue on it. So if you can see how shimmery that purple is, I think it's really, really pretty. When I was a kid, I made a, a crocheted part of an affigan out of these two colors. Apparently, it's a color scheme I still like a long, long time later. Then, I'll show you my card. Here is the one card with hello. See how sparkly that is? And then, I wanted to show you this one for sure because I wanted you to see how metallic my watercolors are. You see that the yellow, how pretty that is? That's all from the watercolor that I put on there. And the blue along the edge also from the watercolor and the red in the middle. I don't think the red mica powder, oh look how pretty my hands are. Um, I don't think the red is as sparkly as the other colors. The yellow is really, really super sparkly as is that green. I really like them. Anyway, so those are the projects I did with my mica powders that the p nice people at Hippie Crafter sent me. I hope you enjoyed this and that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.